Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. I'm Tony Haggerty at a Haggerty 10 Twitter handle, as you know by now. And I'm joined today by Sean Martin at Sean Martin TCW. Good morning, Sean. And at the risk of going all Howard Keel, oh, what a beautiful morning. <laughs> there we are now. Indeed, it's nothing like a signing first thing in the morning to take everybody by surprise. Celtic announce, oh, Sean, you. Uh, a sign for the club, and yep. uh, yes, we welcome O to Celtic. Sean, you've been a busy boy this morning. Oh, 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 it's magic, Tony. I think is uh, <laughs> I think it's the phrase. And I definitely been busy this morning. Just basically, as soon as you log on, uh, you see the Celtic social media admin saying, "Oh, it's happening," and I'm going on. No, I'm not ready for this. Hold on. <laughs> Let me get my cup of tea made. Indeed. Indeed. Well, it's a wonderful start to the morning. Celtic announced their fourth signing of the January window. We'll come to that. I'll just direct you, as always and as ever, to the strap line running along the bottom. And you can join us at the Celtic Way by the click of a button and subscribe. www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. And for £1, you can enjoy four months of unlimited access to everything that's written in the pod. Lots of stuff on today. And you'll enjoy that. And if you do subscribe, new subscribers will receive, as you can see on the screen there, that limited edition bespoke A3 artwork by renowned Celtic football artist made by Frankie, proven to be very popular indeed, Sean. And that's all you have to do is subscribe and you receive one of them, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. And we also say thank you to our new sponsors who are Seneca. And Celtic Way Morning Briefing is now sponsored by Seneca Medical Group. And Seneca are the number one hair transplant company in Europe. And they offer innovative hair restoration treatments. And you can find out more about Seneca via the links in the description of this video. Busy, 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 Sean. Oh, Hyung Yu has been announced as a Celtic player. He's spoken his first words. You did the Q&A up. It's all, yeah. it's all up on the website. You'll put all the links up to that. But... He, the first thing that gripped me, as he said, it's like walking onto a movie set. <laughs> you know, so he's uh, he seems to be fairly chuffed that he's here. He does, I he's uh, obviously the, the translator um, was working overtime because it was uh, it was uh, it was subtitles on it. But I, from what he was saying on that, he's delighted. He said it was like a movie set. Uh, he got a wee hug off as post to Coggle while the cameras were running as well. I noticed <laughs> that, but no. He's talking a good game so far, and as Posta Coglu mentioned, I mean, just to get the plug in right away, we done the, the video last night, video special. Could have timed it better, actually, now, Tony. Yeah, but, indeed. Um, right, with Jason Lee, Korean football expert, and he had mentioned, I'd asked him about his personality in terms of coachability and how he might adapt in different things, and Jason had says that he's known to be quite a determined character, and basically he's got his head screwed on, he chose to do his military service early so that it wouldn't ha ha hamper a move to, to Europe. And different things, and as Postecoglou's already said that the persistence, basically the, the persistence being reported uh, through various media outlets in Korea, that he was chatting the manager's door saying, "I want to go to Celtic. I, I really need to go. It's a dream," and all that. Ba basically, that was true. As Postecoglou, you you're always mentioning about the when you you figured out or you just you, you asked him about his recruitment process, and he says about personalities and players uh, and merging the two of them. It sounds as if this is this is one that definitely ticks both boxes for Ange Postecoglou because he's I think within the space of his reaction he's mentioned it about four or five times that uh, O's personality was was a massive factor in actually getting it done. Well, he's always said he wants players that want to play for the club, Sean. Mm -hmm. And if a man hammers the manager's door four times and says I want to go to this club, when the manager comes away with a comment, I couldn't break his heart any longer. That shows you there's a determination there, isn't there? And mm. we spoke to Jason yesterday as well, and really brilliant insight into uh, O as a player. And he was talking about he was that determined that he did his not military service very early, got mm -hmm. it out the road because he was so focused and driven on his football. Sean will put the link up to that interview, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's there. And uh, 25 minutes round about that, Mark, but it's absolutely... You know, it's a cracking insight into the player and what he brings to the table. If you haven't already watched it, I would advise 
go and check it in, Sean, yeah? Uh, Jason Lee, I noticed his comment on the video as well. He says, full disclosure, I'm not that informed football professional journalist. He's an ignorant amateur. I don't know if I'd call you ignorant, Jason, but I did notice your comment on the uh, under the video yesterday. What a name, he said. What a name. Yes, indeed, indeed. But it was uh, very enlightening to ourselves, and I would encourage all the Celtic supporters, if they want to know a wee bit more about O2, go and watch that uh, if you if you haven't done it so already and, and watch, obviously, uh, O's first uh, Q and A, and obviously the manager speaking very highly of him, Sean. But it's yeah. just another one of the kind of building blocks in place that you feel, isn't it? I I think um, given his, his profile, I mean, well, first of all, does this to you tell you that, that you're going to need to admit defeat with the Yakamakis yeah. situation? Do you think, or I is think there so. still something in you saying, well, three strikers that we'll... you wanted anyway? So, <laughs> well, I did want three strikers, of course, yeah, but I I think you kind of see the writing on the wall but it, and, I, and I knew it would probably go to the wire anyway so mm. something will probably happen within the next few days with regards to Jack and Marcus mm. I, I kind of well to say I don't probably see him staying now if he stayed great uh, but you know I, uh, I I still want three strikers in the building <laughs> that was my thoughts but I think uh, I think it's fair to say that George's Jack and Marcus could be Definitely heading for the exit door, eh? Sounds as if it's uh, Atlanta United. It's the most firmed yes. up interest in the end so far. Um, aye, it's, I mean, by all accounts, good life in the MLS, especially if he's your designated player, but it is still a bit of a, an odd move, I would say, if he goes there. But It's still a head-scratcher for me, Sean. It really is. It's, uh, and, and I'm sure the truth will come out at some point. You know, there has to be more to it. No, uh, and I can only assume it's it's game time, uh, uh, you know, because why would you want to leave Celtic at this juncture mm-hmm. when there's something bubbling away under the surface and Ange Post recalled was building something? So, yeah, it's you know, uh, as I say, what, what we got six days left in the transfer window yep. to see uh, what what happens, the eventuality of that. But you know, and I'm I'm like Chow Pill there, I'll, I'll be sad to see him go, but. Robert Kennedy nails it there. Ange isn't hanging around though. He's just getting, he's getting his, uh, no, he's planning ahead. That succession mm-hmm. planning, as you've spoken about, or we've spoken about a lot, Sean. You know, yep. he, he doesn't, right. doesn't let the grass grow under his feet. He's always constantly thinking and evolving, and and that's part of that. And he told us at the AGM that's what he was going to do. That the club needs to continually evolve and move on and and act like a big club. Yeah, you'll say goodbye yeah. to big name players, but they'll bring in players. So. Get used to that. Aye. Uh, sorry, I was laughing because i just seen it. I'm not going to put it up because there's a wee sweary word in the comment, but Kaiser's um, comment about uh, my face during the Seneca adverts, apparently. <laughs> so <laughs> thinking of the marketing guys have screwed me over, aye, pretty much. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't really want to spend too much on Yakimakis today or anything, but it is, it is related to the to the old transfer. Yeah. I think I think it's, it's fair for you to say that. Um, Robert Kennedy's comment, yep, yeah, Ange isn't hanging around excellent news. But there's also, there's plenty of welcoming messages Raymond had in a big welcome, all the best. Andrew Glear just says, happy days. And then Andrew also commented on our, our interview with Jason Lee. Um, and Jason Lee himself, not not that Jason Lee, ever Jason Lee, if you want to put it that way, um, says the way he's looking at it is Celtic have a 28-year-old exit in the building and George Ross Yakimakis and a 21-year-old up-and-comer uh, in O taking his place and he likes that trend. And I think that's a trend that I mean, Celtic should be going down that kind of that kind of way. We've spoken about that before, though, Sean, haven't we? Mm. You've touched on ages, mm-hmm. certain players, and Juranovic was one that you you banged on about in terms of his age and in terms of his worth and what Celtic could hope to recoup for him, even even at his height. So, you know, when it was all going well, mm-hmm. so it is a big thing, you know, when you're bringing in players, you know, and the fact that. And as I say, you go back to the fact that Jason, who mentioned that on the the briefing uh, yesterday, the interview, we were saying about that he'd done his military service. Yeah. And Cho had also done his military service. So he was bigging up Celtic for actually doing their homework and their scouting on that, that that wouldn't have affected either of those two players, whichever one came in. Yeah. It would be, oh, not Cho, but Celtic had targeted those two specifically because there was no military service attached to mm. it. I, I mean, it's always a thing with, with South Korea. I know yeah. Key, if I remember rightly, Key was at Swansea before he had to do his, I think. Yep. Um, 
but it's still a concern. And, and Jason rightly pointed out that that's something that the J1 League has over the, the K League because yeah. it's not a thing in Japan. You don't need to do national service, so it's never a concern. If you're ready to go, you can go. The thing I would say to that is they have the kind of university system. That's why Real Hatati's 24 25 when he, when he joins yeah. Celtic rather than 21 22. But in, in actual football playing years, he's, he's probably about the equivalent of 2021. 20, um, yeah. So there is something there in terms of the university system, but it's nothing as drastic as national service that, that you need to serve. Uh, out with, as Jason says, out with winning a medal that, that gets you exempt, an exemption from it. But you're right, O chose to do it, which I think speaks to that character that Ange Postecoglou yeah. spoke about and that Jason spoke about and that his, his manager that said that he was very persistent, he knows what he wants, that kind of thing. Uh, his old manager, I should say now, uh, it, it speaks to, to what they've mentioned. Um, the fact that he went out of his way to say, no, I want to do it now while I'm younger rather than have it possibly hinder what I'm hoping to yeah. do with my career. And I like that. Yeah. And Gary McDowell comes in here, Sean, and you're always bang on about this. Yep. Yeah. I've, I've got a question on that, though. I am um, mm-hmm. five-year contract, right, from now, obviously subject to international claims, but five-year contract from now takes him to January 2028, not summer 2028. So it would be good to see some... Probably not get it, but it was good to see some clarification that it's not a, a Ryan Christie type expiration date midway through a season. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It might just be the way that they've ordered it. might be a five and a half year deal, it might be the end of that season, but I just I found that a wee bit. That just made me or, think. Or a four and a half year deal, maybe. You don't know. Well, either, or as long as it's not midway through a season, I would say. But um, I, I mean, these things. The thing is, and I, th- I think the, the, the club would be probably be right if they responded to, to what I've pointed out there by saying, well, if it goes the way that we think he's going to go, the contract will have been revised well before then anyway. Of course. But I would argue it wasn't revised in time for Ryan Christie. So um, so I, that's a question I would have about the five year. But no, overall, the security is underrated thing. I've not tweeted it out today yet. I've managed to hold myself back. I've tweeted yeah, it about yeah. seven times in the last well, the last couple of windows. Um but I might still do it. I might still do it because I've been doing it. I used to, the summer window, I've done a wee list all the different people that's contracts expire after 2025 and all that. And it's good. It makes for good reading, Tony. I, I, I'm glad you can see it because you usually get it right. I usually cock it up, don't I? Security's <laughs> overrated or whatever it is. You know, but, uh, but yes, security's underrated, as you say, Sean. But yeah, it's just good that uh, the manager has got them in the building. Blind as a bat says when Jason says she's a tank and good in the air, I start to get excited. Well, funnily enough, that's when myself and Sean we <laughs> might have thought our expressions when he said that. And the first thing we said when we came off air after the interview, we both looked at each other and you said to me, Sean, tank. <laughs> he just kind of laughed, didn't we? Yeah, he's a tank. And we were, and, and you said, Well, he's six foot one, didn't he? You? you were six one, yeah. You point out that he's height, he's six foot plus. So, another good thing. And, and you look at them and you actually don't see that at first glance, do you? Mm. But uh, he's, a, he's an athletic six one rather than a stocky six one, is what yeah, I would say. So when you take Jason's, you know, because Jason knows more about him, and I was like, okay, because that's not what I picked up on exactly when I, when I just saw him and I looked at, at, at oh in terms of physique. But I'm, I'm willing to, I'm, I'm getting a wee bit excited about that, Sean, what he can bring to the table, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I think, uh, I mean, rightfully Jason was pointing out, and, I, and I'd written this in, uh, it was in the Joey Dawson piece, and I mentioned it yesterday to you and Aidan as well, but he's not played competitively since the end of October, one international yeah, yeah. friendly aside, I think the week after and start of November, so he's not necessarily ready to come straight in the team, which is where the Joey Dawson argument come in, like if Yakimakis goes to Atlanta or wherever, then there might be a wee vacuum there. I suspect it would probably be Maida would get chose to go th- chosen to go through the middle if Kyogo was rested for any reason in the next couple of weeks. But that said, he's not averse to putting someone straight in either, I suppose to Kogo. No. But I just think the length of time there, they've only just started their pre-season. Um, so he has some training under his belt and he's obviously seen the, his new teammates at, at, at Lennox Town and all that already as well. Oh, but... On that basis, um, and the basis that he's still young and all that kind of thing, Jason was kind of preaching caution in terms of, I mean, don't expect him to hit the ground running necessarily. He'll probably take a wee while to get up to speed and, and all of that stuff. But nonetheless, new guy in the door, athletic 6-1, different option. I mean, he said himself in his, his welcome interview that the fact that there are, there are other, other Asian players at the club will make it easier for him in terms yeah. of settling in. 
Um, but I'm also thinking a wee, maybe a wee football manager speak here, but a wee bit of a, a wee bit of a mentor uh, with Kyogo here, maybe as yes, well. There's a lot of, there's a difference in their age, enough that I think Kyogo was confident in his own skin and very personable uh, in terms of his um, his role in the dressing room, but also his his position under Ange Postecoglou. I think he knows how highly he's valued. So I think realistically, you, you can say, oh, we'll be learning off Kyogo as well. Oh, without a doubt, Sean and. You only have to look at the fact that I think that the biggest lesson that Kyogo can say to you is to stick the ball in the net and you'll be a hero. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just, you know, uh, follow my lead. That's all you have to do. And I, and I, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting to see what the two will bring, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If and when they play together. And because uh, all mm -hmm. stats weren't. Uh, too bad, were they? Sean was at 14 goals. He got 39 appearances last year. I yeah, I think it's that. Yep. And there was a run of what eight in a row or something. Eight, 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 ten. Yeah. So well, the kind of things. That, well, the kind of things that, you know, flick your switch as a Celtic supporter. I know he's capable of going on a run and, and scoring and well, just capable of scoring goals. Mm -hmm. and, and Jason said he will score goals. Yeah. I've put the uh, Stuart Ross did an in-depth scouting report, uh, which I promised he that uh, we'd get yeah, done. Yeah. That's done. That's on the website just now. Lots of detail in there. Lots of stills. Lots of stats. Lots of everything. Uh, player profiles, background, different things like that. So we'd give that a read uh, if you want to know more about him. There's also, as I say, the video special, which a few of you have commented. Really nice comments about. Appreciate that. Yeah, that's true. That's that's very kind. Uh, we. <laughs> As Sean said before we came on here, we couldn't have timed the, the old video any better, could we? Have, really? oh. So, uh, yeah. So uh, glad you're enjoying that, guys. That's good. But and obviously, it's just it's just exciting that uh, Celtic have signed another player. Sean, it's always you always get that kind of buzz, don't you, when you get mm -hmm. a, a new transfer in? Well, Robert so, Kennedy, he's yeah. he's saying it's more than just the signing. It's everything about the the way that they're doing things just now: playing, uh, winning, signing people. He says the feel good factor at Celtic just now is massive. Travelling on a Saturday to Celtic Park is a pleasure. Yeah, and you, you, you get that a few times in Celtic's history. I think the, everybody that went to Celtic Park and the Martin O'Neill era and the Brendan Rodgers and Vince Spoke era will say that. And then going further back to Jock Steen's era will say the same, won't they? So mm -hmm. you, you grab onto that and you, you enjoy that happiness. You have to embrace these good times and enjoy them. Uh, for for what they're worth, and I think is since Ange Postecoglou has come in the door, uh, it's been nothing but positivity uh, from Celtic in mm -hmm. terms of signings and and what he's brought. And I don't think there are a few better sights in football, Sean, than bringing unbridled joy to Celtic. <laughs> as I I mention it a lot, but when you wake up every day and you're just breathing positivity about your football club, it it says a lot for. For everybody and the way that the club has been driven forward and everybody seems to be on the same page. It's a it's a powerful thing. I'll tell you what, Tori, it makes it it makes it good to cover, doesn't it? It makes it enjoyable yeah. to cover because all right, it, it helps that they won a double the first season we've been working together. Awesome. Uh, it helps that obviously that when we started off, like it was in the, the tail end of a, a really well, that, that yeah. season it won't be named. <laughs> just Chaos the, the pre season, that even when Ange, Ange Postecoglou took over, it was young players and players that were on like half out the door, that kind of thing. But since then, and since he's, he's got his feet under the table, it's it's been one positive thing to another, whether it's in terms of the style of play, whether it's in terms of the, the recruitment, whether it's just his kind of quotes. You done a round up of his year in quotes oh. and stuff, even that was was, was, yeah. was good to do. Um, but I, I think. Charlie Nicholas, it was yesterday, and I know I don't always agree with what's in his columns, but he um, he said yesterday that, in his opinion, he just he just sees it as, as opposed to Coglu, and then, by extension, Celtic, just being a step ahead of everybody else in Scottish football. Just now, Tony. Kaiser's went one one better. He says, uh, I'm just playing chess while the others are playing checkers. He's two moves ahead, in his mind. Um, and I don't disagree. And what I will say, Tony, without meaning to get, without meaning to bring anything else into it, but there's very little luck involved. And I've, I've written a piece to that effect uh, last week. If any of you have read that, you'll know where I stand on that. But I would just, I, I just want to reiterate that this isn't luck. The way that it's worked out in the last few windows. It's conscious planning, sure. It's forward planning. It's also, and this is this is perhaps the, the biggest takeaway. 
for the whole luck furore um, was simply put, it's a club spending within its means. Is 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 fundamentally yeah. what it is, Tony. Um, so yeah. as I say, there's no luck about it, and I would expect this to continue in terms of the transfer windows. Maybe not necessarily with recruitment in this window. It's probably going to be outgoings, which brings us to your uh, newsletter topic that went out last night and up the site this morning. Um, yeah. But it's um, it's 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 a feature, I think. And I think uh, that's that's maybe what will be the feature of the next six days, maybe concentrating on outgoings and trimming that excess fat from the squad. Sean will put the link to uh, an article I put up this morning, which was on, which was a digest, and six players who we, we called them expendable Celtics expendables. We kind of gave the, the title, wasn't it? But there it's there. If you want to have a look at that, uh, you, you can indeed. And we've just kind of named a few players that we thought it's their time possibly to leave the club, Sean, because I uh, for various reasons, not necessarily reasons. to, to, to give yeah. like you, you've not just said, Well, get them out, get them out, get them out. There's a write up for each of them, yeah. Either they're not playing, or there's a there's a specific reason they're not playing, or they're not even getting into squads, and or yeah. their contract situation, it'd be better if they just get, get removed from the wage bill, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, it's just the guys that are here currently in this window, yes. um, so. For instance, the, the guys out on loan that you still think might fit into that category where they maybe need to be offloaded, it's not including them, it's including the guys that are still at Lennox Town just now, that kind of thing, yeah. um, that conceivably might be going in the next four to five, six, six days, whatever it is. And, and I think, you know, and I noticed there were someone, I think it might have been Chill Pill, but I've mentioned it before as well, that you, you can say what you like about the manager, but there's also a ruthless streak to him, Sean. Mm-hmm. That I think he realises now he's got to get even more ruthless in terms of his squad, and he will trim those numbers down. And he's just he has he has an image of Celtic just now, and he has an image of Celtic in the future and what he wants in terms of his players, and that's a tight run ship in terms of a, a first team squad in which every player in that squad will contribute. There will be no kind of players who don't contribute in that squad show. And I think that's that's what he envisages uh, moving forward and that there'll be no players on the periphery. Everybody who's in his first team squad, however many numbers that will be, mm-hmm. will be a contributor. There'll be no periphery players or no fringe players. Uh, and, and, and there'll also be that kind of pathway for the B team players that you're talking about uh, to come through as well. And I think that's what he's now setting his mind on doing, getting rid of those excess players so that he has that tight group. Pick a number. I don't know what the number may be, but it's it's everybody's going to be a contributor rather than have players just not contributing at all. I agree. I think um I think I think it's just it's it's logical that when you've brought yeah. in a few, you brought in four and at least two of those were Predating a, a departure, so Alistair Johnston in for Juranovic, and all we presume in for Yakimakis. You could argue Kobayashi and Jens if Jens is indeed leaving, he was always on loan anyway. Um, and it, as you said in your piece, the option to buy thing it looked as if it, it looks as if it was getting slimmer by the day. And then yesterday, it yeah. just it seems to have kind of emerged that the understanding is he's, he's going to be going back to Lorient and. Perhaps maybe Schalke, was it, that we're looking at? Yeah, in Germany, yeah, um, yeah. We were also looking at Chris Julian before, remember? Um, yeah, uh, So you could argue Kobayashi coming in, but I think that was that was probably something that was in Andrew's head anyway because he's a lefty, left centre-back, all, all that kind of stuff, and the rest of them were on permanence, and Jens has just missed, like, he's just missed out, basically, because he's the lone e. Um Stephen Welsh has mentioned in your, your expendables, but it's still just a kind of loan deal just now. There's a homegrown quota to think on when it comes to him as well. Yeah. Um, but I just think it's logical that when, when these guys have been brought in and there's already guys there that are sitting either in the same position or, or, or other positions, like, for instance, <clears throat> Tomoki Iwata gets brought in, there's not a centre-mid left yet, and there's not even a, a, a high-profile centre-mid that's rumoured to leave, but there's a couple of centre-mids there that are struggling to get into squads, never mind, uh, never mind on the pitch. So you, you'd be looking at those kind of players over the next week, both of which are mentioned in your, in your yeah. piece. Correct. Uh, Eddie Gucci and McCarthy, obviously, I mean there, but yeah, and Abogard too. And Abogard, yep. Who's the kind of weird kind of 
Yeah. Was it a loan? Was it not a loan? It was it the, it's probably the FIFA letting you cancel your contract for a year or defer your contract. So do you just do you just say no, we don't want you anymore? It was a weird one with him, but I ultimately he's in the same boat as Edigucci and McCarthy, isn't he? Uh, yeah, correct. And I also think as well that, and I know you can. Someone put a comment up that you can't force players out the door. No, you can't force players out the door. I, I, I get that, but I don't think Angel shirk away from those kind of decisions when they need to be made. Mm. Uh, from players and uh, going and saying about contracts and stuff and terminating them and saying, look, it's probably best that you, you you go elsewhere or try and resurrect your career elsewhere rather than sit for however many years that they may have left in their view. I don't think that that's something that Andrew would back away from. No, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think that there, there's a balance in there. There's, yeah, um, like, it's... it's, it's um, it's easy to think on football club is something out with the world of work and all that because yeah. because they get so much money for it and, and, and the contracts are always in years rather than permanent contracts or that kind of stuff. Um, but ultimately, it is still a worker. You can't force a worker out yeah. um, if they've got the contract and all that kind of thing. But in football, because of the money floating about, you can make it worth their while to cancel their contract and all that kind yeah. of thing. You can pay them up a certain amount. You can you can basically you can depending on their age, it might not apply to McCarthy, but you can because he's. At the, old, the, the end stage of his career, but certainly a younger player you, like Scott Robertson, you can say, Listen, you're not going to play, it is better for you if you go mm. elsewhere. And he obviously got an offer from Fleetwood yeah. and went, so there's all that to think on. But ultimately, thinking on it coldly as a it, this is a football club and it's the playing staff, then yeah. I, I think the six guys that you've mentioned, I, th- I, I basically, even just to be controversial, I can't disagree. I think all six of them deserve to be on that list that you, you drew up, yeah. Willie Larson coming in and saying here, a lot of the discussion focus on scary hands. The guy doesn't manage through fear. He's a great man, manager, motivator. I totally agree with that. I don't think he manages through fear at all. I'm just talking that there's a ruthless side to a manager like Ange. That's all. I'm not saying he's a, a, a manager through fear, not in the slightest, because I think everybody listens to him and can see and hear. That he's a great man manager and a great motivator and i think aaron moy the other day was talking about those kind of motivational speeches that he gives doesn't he and players rise to it and we've certainly seen a few of them on youtube videos and stuff like that so well yeah whilst uh, we are talking about a ruthless side hands in terms of what he wants for his football club in terms of playing personnel that's what i'm talking about i'm not talking about a manager who rules with a an iron fist or anything like that I, I just don't see him being that kind of manager, Sean, do you? No, I think you can shoot and ball with the best of them, as you've seen, but I don't think that's his, that's his go-to, because you that's get managers true. where their go-to is an iron fist type thing. And don't get me wrong, it doesn't strike you as the kind of guy you would want to cross and, uh, yeah. and different things like that. But when you were saying ruthless, I didn't think you meant through fear. I, th- I just thought you meant in terms of a, re- a reality yeah, uh, kind of, a reality-driven kind of, a reality yeah. driven kind of, kind of structure where if he knows somebody wants to go, he's not going to tell them, oh, I need, really need you to stay, he'll say that we'll find you somewhere. Um, yeah. And likewise, if he wants a target and he gets a target, it might mean that someone else is sacrificing some game time, but that's the way it is, that's the cost of progress, that kind of thing. Um, I didn't think he meant by fear, um, although I do th- I do, I do know he can shoot and ball with the best of them, obviously. Oh, without a doubt, and uh, yeah, I think somebody also, <laughs> OP Cool says, Andy's dry, hum- humour delivery helps. It does... And having sat in front of them before and been and had that kind of cheek with it, it says you you do know when you're kind of pushing the envelope or or you know when not to push the envelope that kind of thing. But he has got a wonderful sense of humour to be fair to him. It's uh, but it's and for some people that can be an acquired taste. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he he is uh, he's a funny guy in his own way to be fair to him. Ah uh, yeah, I I find them quite quite funny, but then I it depends if you're on the other end of the, the put down, I suppose, don't yeah, it? But yeah. um uh, there, there's plenty of comments coming in here about your expendables, Tony. Abel Garden in particular's been marked mm-hmm. as one that's been underwhelming. Um yeah. Antonio's comes in saying, Where did Maritz Jens go wrong? He thought he was challenging Starfield, scored some goals as well. I don't think he did anything wrong. I just think one was a permanent player, uh, the other one was on loan. And I just think yeah. he's lost out from that. From that that move, I, I think you could argue that Starfield coming straight back in might have surprised some in the manner in which it was just right that you bombed out now Jens in a way like that kind of thing. But ultimately, he's not. He wasn't a Celtic player. 
I think deep down, although he did he did well at the start, I think as the January transfer window approached and Kobayashi became a reality, yeah. I think potentially it just it was just one of those, as I said, reality driven where I don't need Jens now, don't need him. I, I'm not going to I'm not going to exercise that option to buy. So might as well play the he, players that I know are going to be here. I think he served his function and his purpose, and I think Celtic probably weren't expecting Carol Starfield to come back as quickly mm-hmm. and return to forum as quickly because they maybe saw Jens playing a lot longer or, or being you know, a, a, a more extended run in the side which mm-hmm. he didn't get but you can't fault the job he did because it, he didn't do anything particularly wrong did he? He was just a victim of the fact that Starra felt come back and he rediscovered that forum that he had before he got injured and also he signed a natural left-sided centre-back in the shape of Kobayashi and as you say, there are times that's part of that ruthless decision making I'm talking about. You have to turn around and say, right, don't need this guy. Thanks for playing. We've enjoyed your time. I hope you've enjoyed your time. You know, we shake hands, we go our separate ways. That's it. And I think this is um I remember when when the loan to buy deal was just about to get confirmed. I I wrote the newsletter. And as I'm, as I'm wanting to do, Tony, I went a kind of NBA route with it and just said, this is the stereotypical performance you can expect from Maurice Jens. And then gave the caveats of the teams he's played for are not ball-dominant teams, are not high-pressing teams. So his mm-hmm. stats will improve because as a Celtic centre-back, there's so much responsibility on you, all that kind of thing. I've mentioned a few times on here, he, he didn't compare himself to Bonucci and Boateng, but he said it was who he, he kind of looked at as, as where he wanted to be, what kind of defender he wanted to be. And I was making the point, he's not really done that yet. Celtic would be the, the ultimate chance for him to show that he was that type of player. I think he'd done that to a certain degree, but ultimately when I wrote that piece, the fact that it was a loan with an option to buy, not an obligation to buy, which means you're tied into it anyway, but an yeah. option to buy, basically the way I put it was it's it's a suck it and see. Yeah. And what they've seen so far is good. It was good. I, I'll, I'll maintain I, th- I think he, he did well. But ultimately... When you're eyeing up a left a left footed left centre back, which is where he's playing, because you're not you're not ousting Carter Vickers, I think we all know that. Um you sign a left footed left centre back and there's only one defend central central defender on your staff that is not your defender that's on loan. Why would you exercise that option to buy unless he was at a Cameron and Carter Vickers level? And he yeah. it just wasn't. And the, and the thing about it, Sean, is that that's the nature of try before you buy. Yep. You and I mean, tried. that's what you do yesterday, Tony. Yeah. You, you see yeah. my tweet yesterday. It was it what it's worked for Celtic in the last couple yeah. of seasons. Jota, yeah. in particular, right? I know Carter Vickers that the, there was the loan, and then there was kind of some Dubai air about whether the fee was agreed already. Blah blah blah. But with Jota, the six and a half, obviously, now it looks like a steal uh, to, to have put yeah. that in it. But that was a try before you buy. It wasn't an obligation. Dyson yeah. Maida was an obligation, so you were getting him regardless of how he done yeah. last January. Um, just obviously he did really well in the running and stuff, so it was it was a formality at that point. Um but with Jota it was an option, with Jens it was an option, and I said this in my tweet, it worked for them that they had the option in place yeah. with Jota. It's also worked for them that they had it with Jens because although he did well, once you've seen Kobayashi and you know you're probably not going to want him, whether you let it run to the end of the season for cover or whether you, you end up arranging to cancel it now. You're no worse off because you don't owe anybody anything. You've not got him tied down to a three-year deal. You've not already right. agreed that he's coming. So I think it's worked out. I think it's worked out both ways for Celtic yeah, option to buy deals. And Red Zep, just backing up what I'm saying, and he's been ruthless with regard to gents. Yeah, it has to be. That's the bottom line. It's, it's, uh, he doesn't see Maurice Jens as being part of Celtic's future moving forward. Mm-hmm. And I like that, that they've just called it early and said, look, that's it. It's not going to happen. We move on. We have other players that we feel that we're going to work with, i.e. Kobayashi being one of those. So I'm on board with that, Sean. Same. I I think it's not as if it's not as if this loan's going to get cancelled if it does get cancelled and it leaves you one shot because as I say, Kobayashi's already in the door, he's already playing, he's already starting. Um so I it, it makes perfect sense to me. What I want to say to you, going back to the O deal, Tony. Mm-hmm. Um he's going to wear the number nineteen, which uh, I pointed out in my tweet because I like to do the squad number tweet when when uh, somebody signs. It was Mikey Johnston's number. He's obviously away on loan for a full season at Vitoria over in Portugal. Uh, he over there he's actually wearing his old number for Celtic seventy three, I think. Um, so it might just be that 
he wants that number when he comes back. But there's yep. a few comments in here saying, does that tell you something about Mikey Johnston's future that they've gave away squad number while he's away? Yeah, it's a bit of a cryptic one, that, is it not? Okay, well, Max Stark thinks, thinks it spells the end. I don't necessarily think it does, but it's obviously, I mean, you would imagine there'd have been a conversation because a squad number means a lot of people will, not everybody, yeah. but a lot of people. <laughs> But um, given that he's number 73 over at Victoria, maybe he's simply, if he's coming back, he's going to go back to his old squad number when he first broke through. I, I don't know. But the the fact is, it, it was Mikey Johnston's squad number until the start of this season, and uh, it's now O's. Well, it's, lots of people are going to read a lot into that, aren't they? Yeah. Hence, we're getting comments like Max Start. Right there you have it. Well, that's another yeah. one that will be... Just a quick clarification, Tony. I think we're of the understanding it's around about two and a half million pounds, isn't it? Two and a half million, yeah. Yeah, that's so a true. Few, few, few reports saying that, a few uh, few different places yeah. all kind of tend to seem to agree on that. Yeah, but I think that's the kind of been the widely reported sum for uh, all services, isn't it? Two and a half million. Uh, yeah. I'm going to put this up as well from Vital Celtic. Uh, it says, O's goal scoring record isn't the yeah. best. Now, on the surface, I agree with that, right? 14 and 39 um, is not, it doesn't, it's not setting the world alight or anything, but as you said, he, he went through a streak where it was 8 and 10, and that was towards the end of the season, so he was picking up for him. He's also just, he's, he's 21. He said his time in the military, where he played for the military team and stuff, so in terms of getting up ahead of steam, that was that was, that was was the time he managed to get up ahead of steam in yeah. terms of games up front, uh, and, and he went through a really good goal scoring streak. Now, 14 and 39 isn't that great, but as we spoke to Jason about last night, it, it's not really about necessarily at that age in top flight. You don't expect him to be scoring a goal a game at that point. And we spoke about the, the different team that he was coming from uh, compared to Celtic. They're not necessarily a ball-dominant team. I looked them up. They don't have the ball half the game. Um, Celtic are obviously 65 to 70% of possession is, is Celtic. Um, and while a striker with Celtic may not get that many touches, they get chances. Um, more, he'll get more chances here than he did at, at, at Suwon. Yeah. But well, there's all that to consider. But more than anything else, his age. 14 and 39 for a 21 year old that's only just breaking into uh, senior football, having had a couple of uh, a season in the military and different things. I think it is a positive, even though I agree that on the face of it, with Vital Celtic's got a point. The actual record of 14 and 39, it's not even one and two, so it's not great on the face of it. But for me, I'm with you. I kind of see the positive side of it in his age. The context of where he's been playing yeah. and different things that I'm thinking there's there's definite that's a definite place for improvement. But ultimately, Jason said last night the goals will come, but more than anything else, even if his shooting boots aren't on, like dies and Maida, he will give you the the work rate off it anyway. Yeah, yeah. And the first thing when he when Jason spoke, the first thing he said was about the workhorse and all that and that work ethic mm -hmm. and what he brings to the team. And I looked at you after, and the first thing I said to you is. Guys in Maida, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I said he, from the minute Jason spoke about, uh, oh, I said he's a kind of Guys in Maida type, and that's the, that's what Ange loves about footballers. And if you're looking at that fourteen and thirty nine, just looking, at, if you're isolating that, then it doesn't tell half the story, does it? As you mm -hmm. say, as you've just gone into there, and I was looking at the bigger picture, and obviously he's twenty one. Mm -hmm. We'll be. Loads of room for improvement. Learning off Kyogo as well, as you pointed out earlier. So I I can only see those stats improving, Sean. Nothing else is, in my, is entered in my head. Uh, when that, that, that's he, the thing, right? That's, that's the scope of bringing in a 21-year-old. There uh, there's obviously going to be, to use the VAR term, teething problems yes, yes. Maybe initially. Uh, Sorry to bring VAR up in a, an episode that didn't really need VAR brought up, but uh, <laughs> aye, it's 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 one of those things. It's part and parcel of signing a player that's that's a like a, that's got raw edges. It's not the finished product. It's part of the it's part of the the modus operandi of Celtic. You'd, if you were signing the finished product, you'd be paying ten, twelve million. Yes, correct. So that's and that's the thing. And also, you again, you go back to you you trust the manager's input mm -hmm. at this level and in this market. For the for the players that you're bringing in, you know you you trust them implicitly, that and you know he's done his homework on them and that they will bring something to Celtic, and uh, you know I'm I'm happy I'm on board with that. 
Yeah. Just going to say, Max, start pointing out, I'm I'm wrong. He doesn't wear 73 Victoria, he wears 90. So I've, I've saw something that's not there. <laughs> uh, so I know that I'm saying that means necessarily the 19 thing means that he's, he's not coming back. But yeah. um, I, for some reason, I thought he wore 73 and, and he was maybe just wanted his old number back. But I fair enough. Um, I still don't want to read too much into the 19 thing going to O, Tony. Um, no. I suppose we'll just need to see come summer. Yeah, of course. But we'll, we'll, we've seen the summer when Mikey Johnson comes back. What's mm-hmm. going to happen? Until yeah. the summer, he is a Victoria Celtic player on loan to Victoria Gumarish, and he'll be doing what he can to try and make sure that he stays at Celtic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. that's all. Um, there's a couple of things here just thrown up. Um, well, we've got his uh, Derek Crawford just saying, just watch Jason's interview, says he's aggressive, so that will give us a different option to Kyogo. I think Kyogo is aggressive in his own way, like the pressing, the, the bothering people, the buzzing about. He's actually got a wee bit of a nasty streak now and again. You don't usually see it because if he does nudge you, he's usually picking you up as well. So, I, I, I love that kind of thing. It goes under the radar, Sean, but it's not mm-hmm. the first thing you think of with Kyogo mm-hmm. about being aggressive and stuff like that, you know. and Celtic have had some strikers that have flown under the radar in terms of their aggression. Tommy Coyne was a <laughs> a brilliant uh, striker at that. He was very aggressive, but you never thought it about Tommy Coyne because he looked at Acon, but Tommy liked to leave the boot and stuff like that, you know. So there are there are strikers that can handle themselves. Larson was the same. Larson was one of the best. Mm. Larson was one of the toughest strikers you've ever seen. But the you never ever thought that Larson was the kind to go and leave the boot in or that because he very rarely did it. But he, he let his presence known. Now, Paul Lambert always said to me that oh, he, he didn't mess with, mm-hmm. with Larson. You could boot him up and down, but he was always storing it. And- I was going to say, I think with a lot of players, it's force of personality more than like uh, physically intimidating or anything yeah. like that. Like, more than it, a lot of the time, it's actually the same with Kyogo. It's you know, you're not going to knock him off his game just yeah. by trying to get physical. Um, Maida in particular lately has, has seemed to relish that. I mentioned the Lewis Mayo battles, um, yeah. which was, again, quite big for a, a fullback. Maida was loving it. He absolutely loved it. Um, more than it, I think, just because he knew that he'd have beaten all of them as well. But he, he really, really liked it. He liked the physical stuff. Um, but no, I think um, I think I can see what Derek's getting at in terms of six foot one, uh, got the work rate, all that kind of stuff. But I don't, I, I wouldn't sleep on Kyogo's aggressiveness, put it that way. No, no. Um, no. So, uh, got a comment from Josh Boy here. He says he's a Scottish Celtic fan living in Busan, South Korea. He uh, says this is great news and that maybe his girlfriend will watch Celtic games with him now that there's a fellow countryman for her to cheer. Can only wish you uh, mm-hmm. all the best on that endeavour, Josh. And here's hoping that your good lady does allow you to watch uh, the Celtic games now and, and, join, and joins in and we add another to the Celtic family. Sean, mm-hmm. that's what you're hoping, isn't it? On the note of a fellow countryman, um, O is the third South Korean. Yes. After Ki Sung Young and Cha Do Ri. Various kind of, I don't know if you get conflicting memories of the two of them. I think um, the first, probably unfairly, right, but the first thing that comes to mind with me with Cha is the Ren own goal. Yeah. Um, but I actually think he was a decent player. He never maybe quite hit the heights at Celtic as I thought he was going to, but I think he was a decent player. But that unfairly, maybe that Ren own goal is the first thing that comes to my to, to mind with that. Whereas with Ki Sung Young, I, I I thought he was absolutely brilliant. I think he was a an absolute baller. I think you you would say he was a an excellent footballer. Yeah, and Swansea was it? He went to for six million something like that, was it? I think where he went after Celtic, he had Swansea, Sunderland. Was he somewhere? I think it was was he somewhere else? Where, yeah. um down in England. Can't remember off the top of my head. I'm sure somebody will be able to come in and say. Um, but yeah, he was. Um, I, I really liked him. And at first, he struggled to get in the midfield because at the time you had you had a fair amount of midfielders. Um, Newcastle, that is. I've just looked up yeah. Swansea, New yeah, Sunderland Swansea. on loan, and then Swansea Newcastle. For, Swansea for about six million, which I remember thinking yep. was uh, a, a good deal at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, I was sad to lose him because I thought he'd a, a lot more to give. But yeah, the, <laughs> and my, I don't have an abiding football memory of Chadery. I just have that. <laughs> so in my head, don't you wish your full book was Chad <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, because that was a kind of song at the time, wasn't it? Uh, mm-hmm. by the Pussycat Dolls, and that every time I think of Chad Ree, I always think of that song, don't you? You know, yeah, big uh, Pussycat Dolls fan, Tony. 
Well, I, I, not particularly, no, but it's just the first thing that comes to my head when I think of Chad Uri, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, probably a bad thing, but mm. uh, there you go. No, I think with, with Key, do you remember at the time, I, we actually spoke about this team about 2010, 2011, 2011, 2012, uh, the Neil Lennon, what I call the Hooper and Stokes team. Yeah. Um, we, we spoke about that team with Aidan the other day, just just off, off air, obviously. Um, but that midfield at the time, remember you'd Scott Brown playing right mid for a while, um, yeah. Well, you had Joe Ledley playing left back, left mid. You had Chris Commons coming in, uh, in, in in the January, I think, that window. Key was in that team. Key, Key yeah. managed to get in that team. Kyle, when, when Beram Kyle was was at his pomp in that first season, he was brilliant as well. Um, so it was a really, it was a really kind of st- strong team in that midfield. And then later on, you had Van Yama coming in the year after, and Key Scotland, managed to get his games. Key got his game. The Scottish Cup final against Mother, did he not? He did. Twenty eleven Scottish Cup yeah, final. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one year I remember that really good goal. Him and I'm going, I'm going to say Mulgrew scored in that game as well. I yeah, think. he did. Um, I, I can't remember who got the third. Even Craig and OG was or not? Was it was Albert Howard? I don't remember. I don't, memory serves, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that was uh, his Charlie Mulgrew scored the free kick, didn't he? Aye, he scored the free kick, yeah. So, just yeah. You know, the roller decks in your head for those mm-hmm. that remember those roller decks trying to kind of, yeah, roll, you say roller decks, all I think was Del Boy. <laughs> it's probably a Celtic dad thing, John. Sean, you know what I mean? But there you go. Uh, indeed. Well, that's 46 minutes, Sean. I've just looked at the clock. There you go, eh? Yeah. It's always good yeah. when Celtic sign footballers. You've got lots to talk about, and the conversation goes spaghetti junction, doesn't it? And ah, you love, love, it, love, love it. You know, so indeed. Guys, that's been a, a wonderful Wednesday Celtic Way morning briefing. I'll just direct you to the uh, ticker tape at the bottom. You can have four months of access for a pound if you subscribe. And new subscribers will receive a limited edition bespoke A3 artwork by renowned football artist made by Frankie. Thank you for that, Mark. Uh, We'll appreciate that as well. And all you have to do is click a button, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Lots of stuff on uh, the site today, Sean. Been up early. Various yep. articles on O, Scouting Report by Stuart. There's a, an article by myself on six players that could still leave in January, the January transfer window. Jerry, thanks very much. We appreciate that. But yeah, get involved. If you're not a subscriber already, hit that subscribe button, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. And we also thank Seneca. Seneca. Celtic Way Morning Briefing, now sponsored by Seneca Medical Group. And Seneca, the number one hair transplant company in Europe, and they offer innovative hair restoration treatments. And you can find out more about Seneca via the links in the description of the video. But Seneca is not aimed at anyone in particular on this morning briefing. <laughs> is it that right? Um, yeah, just in case anyone... Anyway. Hey, listen, I've made the... I said last two weeks ago, I made the cardinal sin. My wife wasn't happy. Because I shaved and get my head shaved in the same day. I shaved last night and I'm going to get my head shaved later on. I think so. I'll be coming in here tomorrow looking like a burn. So <laughs> you've you've made your peace with the fact that Seneca are now sponsoring the Celtic Way Morning Briefing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your comments. Always appreciate it. We say it every day. We enjoy it. As you can see, with some of these briefings have been going for 45, sometimes the hour mark as well. You, you seem to enjoy it. We, we try and Get the balance right at times, don't we, Sean? Well, Pete Mate G's coming in saying, well, you were late again, all that kind of stuff. Correct, we were, but we did get you notice this time. But what I will say is, we aim for about 20 minutes, that's the, that's the minimum. And I can't remember the last time we stopped at 20 minutes, Tony, no. which probably say, says that we're enjoying it. But more than anything else, it's the quality of the comments as well that keep us going. Because we've got a rough outline, got some stuff that we want to talk about, but... And invariably, it's it's you guys commenting that, that keeps it going and keeps it keeps it interesting. So I appreciate it. Yeah, we do, and uh, and you keep coming back for more. So that we we kinda work on the premise that maybe something's working here, Sean. And we're doing something right, or, <laughs> or whatever. Uh, until you start throwing rotten fruit at the screens and all that, we'll we'll continue to do it. But yeah, oh oh oh, it's magic, you know. Oh, Hyung Yu is in the building. And we hope uh, he brings some wonderful times to Celtic. And as I said at the start of the programme, oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Enjoy your wonderful Wednesday. Sean loves and Albert, so it does indeed. 
Indeed yeah. I do. I think it'll be a wee Northern Soul reference for you there. Yes, you're correct. Uh, and yeah, wonderful Wednesday. We'll see if we can make it a terrific Thursday, guys. Take care. Eh? We'll see you all again tomorrow. That includes you, Pete McGee. <laughs> right, right, and early. Ah, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Thanks a lot for your contribution, Sean. First class, as always. Take care, guys. All the best. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, Trips.